Hey everybody, Julie here from Mostly Caffeinated. I got this big old envelope in the mail the other day, and this is all of our application paperwork for the adoption program that we're going through. A little bit of background there before you maybe watch the rest of this or see what's in this envelope. But we are doing a foster to adopt program. Now, technically our state doesn't have foster to adopt per se. Um, we have foster care and then we have private adoption and then in between we have adopting from foster care. So it's not that we intend to foster children for long periods of time and then potentially adopt some of them. That's, that's not what we're doing. What we are doing is adopting a child who's currently in foster care um, and the agency through which we are working does not end up receiving children until such a point where our social worker said they are 99% sure that child is not going back to their birth family. So we hope to not be stuck in that limbo of whether or not we are adopting the child or the child is being reunified, um, as some foster to adopt programs do, but our particular agency that we're working with, um, they do work with the state, obviously, but they most of the time get children who already have terminated parental rights or where the situation is so dire that they're not going back and they are looking for a permanent place to put them. So what we are doing is applying to adopt children who are in foster care. However, because it takes six months to a year to finalize an adoption, just because the child is living in our home does not mean that they are yet legally our child. For the first six months to a year, they are technically still a foster child. They are technically still supported by the state. And because of that, a lot of this paperwork is actually foster care licensing paperwork. Technically speaking, to undergo this process, we have to be a licensed foster family because those children for six months to a year are actually foster children until our adoption is finalized. So that's kind of different than a private adoption. With a private adoption, um, you're more likely to be able to finalize sooner because the, the child isn't born yet, perhaps, or something, or it's a relative's child and there's not this weird limbo, but um, essentially we are taking a child into our home from the foster care system and just waiting for the courts to process and to have our court date and to legally adopt. So in the meantime, we have to be a foster family. So if you're doing a private adoption, this packet is probably going to have a lot of stuff that you don't need. But if you're applying to be a foster parent, you might have a lot of the same things as my packet has. And if you're doing foster to adopt, odds are good that these are the documents that you're going to find. Um, I filmed it when they were all blank like I literally just opened it and filmed it on my phone because um, I didn't want to put any personally identifying information on there about myself or my husband. Um, I just wanted to show you quick kind of what's in there. So this is probably a low quality video. It's on my phone. I was just like hovering above my packet, but I wanted to kind of flip through for you guys so you knew what to expect. A four minute intro about here's some stuff in an envelope. That's not even called an envelope. That is called a folder. My coffee is brewing back there. I haven't drank it yet. That's why I'm not making any sense. So anyway, on to the clip of showing you the stuff in the official adoption application paperwork in the mail today. And so I thought I would quick let you know what you can expect inside of that packet before I put any personal information. Um, first of all, they did send me a folder. That was very nice. I have a copy of the entire Wisconsin State Foster Home code, the legal stuff, on one side. It did come with a cover letter, but I tucked that behind here because that's got, you know, my full name and address and my social worker's name on it. Okay, and then here's the actual application form. Again, I tucked something behind that has my social worker's information on it, but it's got a place for both of us to fill in all of our information because we are, you know, married, obviously, so everybody fills it out about themselves. It's not like a couple's thing. Um, then there is a health report. I am required to schedule physicals 
for both of us and have these filled out and they sent me two of everything one for me and one for my husband so there's those two oh, I'm sorry I'm on my phone this is probably not the best way to do this but I want to get it done um, a background check like release form thing for one for me and one for my husband there is a records release form so they can look up you know if there's any record of either one of us which there is not uh, there's two spaces on this one form the safe questionnaire which is about you know your home life growing up and stuff and again there are two one for me and one for my husband sorry my other kids are screeching a sheet of references now this is not your three personal references this is like a sheet of Kind of like what you'd fill out if you were applying for a job. They would like a neighbor that is not somebody that's going to be one of your three formal letters of reference. Information about your kids' schools or daycare. Information about your employment. Things like that. So they can just check and make sure that you're not, you know, a felon or something. And on the back of here, if you have any adult children, you have to fill out their information. I do not. A document verification form. Um, of things that you will need to have present when they come to do your home study interview. But this is just like, what's on your birth certificate? Do you actually know where any of these things are? Can you give us some information about that? This is how to fill out some of the forms that follow. And then just two of everything. A new parent information form. This is a list of the classes for training that we could go to. Now, in our case, um, the, I don't know, the social worker that we're working with is based out of a town quite far away from us um, because technically that's our region of our state. However, to attend a training, we are likely going to go to one more local to us, which is not on this form. So I have to give her a call and figure out the dates for trainings we could actually attend. Um, here is things about, you know, who's all in your family of origin. And that's the last sheet in there. So, I will take a look at some of those forms today. I will try to schedule my physical pretty soon, things like that. And let you know how it all goes. I'll turn this around for a second to be on my face. So, that's where we're at right now. I got my packet. It's time to start filling it out. I've got 60 days to get it all sent in, but I'd like to get it sent in within a couple of weeks if possible. So, I'll keep you guys updated. I hope that's helpful. If you're expecting this packet, you could start to get a little bit prepared. You know what's coming. Um, I'll see you around. Okay, so now that you've seen that super unorganized flip through, and I've got a cup of coffee. Let me do a little bit more of a summary. Um, I can't show you the papers anymore because I have filled them out since I filmed that clip. But here's essentially what there is. There's this big application that both me and my husband have to fill out our own columns. And then on this is a place for us to put in financial information and also our personal references. So three people not related to us, their addresses and their phone numbers. These are people you might need to get in touch with soon when you get your packet to see if they're okay with being your references, if you haven't already talked this over with some people. So that's kind of a thing you gotta do in a hurry. You need to schedule physicals in a hurry. There are forms in here for each of you about your general health. Can you survive to raise a child to age 18 is essentially what it's asking. So you should call your doctor, schedule a physical, and you take that paper with you. There is a sheet that asks both me and my husband separately about our families of origin. Um, about our parents and our siblings, where they live, how often we see them. They want to make sure that you have healthy family relationships so that you can have a healthy family relationship. There is a background information disclosure for each of you to fill out. Um, have done any crimes, essentially. 
and there is the safe questionnaire. It's a big old thing about your growing up, essentially. It asks you characteristics you would use to describe your relationships and your family members. There's one of those for each of you. There's authorization to release confidential documents, and there's kind of two of those. Like, there's two separate things that are essentially permission to look up my documents, permission to get my background check. There's a document verification form where you fill out the information found on your birth certificate, your marriage certificate, your driver's license, so you better know where those things are. If you have them in a safety deposit box at the bank, go get them, because you need those numbers. Um, ours came with a new client information form, which is optional. What it is is it just helps our particular agency get demographics facts about the people that they're servicing so they can you know do year-end reports and things like 53 percent of our clients were you know in such and such income bracket or 75 percent of them were hispanic or something like that and that's what's in there and then a copy of the laws about foster care that i'm assuming i'm that doesn't have a note attached but i'm assuming i'm supposed to read that all so that if i have any questions about it i can ask prior to the placement of the child so that's what's in there I hope this was a little helpful heads up. Um, you will need references. You will need to talk to your employer and your neighbor because you need to write down their addresses as well. You will need to get a physical scheduled and then fill out paperwork until your eyeballs fall out of your head. But hey, that's what we do for our kids, right? If you were you know, biologically procreating and having a child, you would be running to doctor's appointments and running to you know, like childbirth classes and buying things for nursery, and you'd be doing all kinds of work for that too. So this is just the kind of work you do to grow your family through foster care or adoption. So if you've got any questions, please leave them down below or just comment if you want to chat. Um, like the video if you want more foster care or adoption videos. Subscribe if you're interested in seeing all my new content. Um, some of it's foster care adoption, some of it is homemaking, some of it is parenting, some of it is... Uh, minimalism, capsule wardrobes, stuff like that. So if you want to see any of that, go ahead and click subscribe. Um, welcome to my new subscriber. Uh, I can't message you because you don't have your subscriptions publicized, or I would have sent you a little welcome message, a little hello. But thanks for joining us here. See you around. Bye.